Whether you saw UFC 261 live or you watched it in the future, you probably thought to yourself during one of those fights, what happened to Jimmy Crute's leg? We're going to answer that question in this video. We're going to first look at the relevant anatomy, and then we're going to see what the heck happened. So on this picture over here on the left side of the slide, we're actually looking at the back side of the thigh. So up here's the thigh, here's the back side of the knee area, which is our popliteal area, and down below that is the back side of the lower leg. This thick nerve right here on the back side of your femur, this is the sciatic nerve. We got another view of it up here. So this whole thing right up here is the sciatic nerve. Now the sciatic nerve is really composed of two nerves that are fused together. Those are the common fibular nerve, also called the common perineal nerve. That's here in green. And then this one in gold here is the tibial nerve. So the sciatic nerve is really a composite of those two nerves that are fused together. Now as that sciatic nerve is descending down the backside of the leg, it's gonna reach the superior upper part of that popliteal space, or that popliteal fossa as we call it. And that's where it divides. So both those nerve components actually separate from one another. And so we have the more laterally placed nerve here in green, which is the common fibular or common perineal nerve, and then the medially placed tibial nerve, which is still in yellow here. And so right here we see that bifurcation, that diversion of the sciatic nerve components. Here in green we have the common fibular nerve, and then over here is the tibial nerve. Now the tibial nerve right here has a lot of branches, but here's the major muscles that it controls. We've got the gastrocnemius, the big calf muscle that you can feel if you put your fingers on the backside of your calf. We've got the soleus, we've got the plantaris, tibialis posterior. We've got the flexor bundle, which produces flexion of some of the toes and the foot itself. Right? Then we have the common fibular nerve right here, also called common perineal nerve. It also diverges into two branches. We've got a deep branch here in darker green. The deep fibular nerve is going to innervate the tibialis anterior, the fibularis tertius, and a few extensor muscles that can control the extension of the toes and the foot. Then we've got this lighter green nerve here. This is the superficial branch, the superficial fibular nerve. This mainly controls fibularis longus and fibularis brevis. Now why is that important? Because certain nerves control certain muscles. And then in turn those muscles have certain actions. So we would actually say the tibial nerve is more associated with plantar flexion. If we look at the two muscles here, gastrocnemius and soleus, those are controlled by the tibial nerve and they perform plantar flexion of the ankle, which is what you see right here. Basically where you take your toes and you angle them away from uh, your head. Basically come up onto your tippy toes, a calf raise, that is plantar flexion. Okay? We also have this muscle here, tibialis posterior, which is a major inverter of the subtalar joint. So this action right here is inversion. Basically, if you angle the bottom surface of your foot toward your midline, so basically towards your other foot, that would be inversion of the subtalar joint, or just of the ankle joint if you want to be very general. Now over here, the common fibular nerve, when it diverges, you have the deep fibular nerve, and the major muscle here of interest is the tibialis anterior, which dorsiflexes the ankle. Here's dorsiflexion. Basically take your toes or your ankle and angle it up toward your head. Dorsiflexion is the opposite of plantar flexion, and dorsiflexion is controlled by the deep fibular nerve. Superficial fibular nerve controls the fibularis muscles longus and brevis. They're responsible for everting the foot, so eversion is the opposite of inversion. If you take the bottom surface of your foot and angle it away from your midline, so out towards the side, that would be subtalar eversion. Now what you can see here is that plantar flexion is an antagonistic or opposite movement to dorsiflexion. Inversion is an opposite motion to eversion. And when everything's working normally, these actions should be balanced. So all I did here is I took my foot off of the ground and just held it there. I'm not biasing any muscles. And what you should see is that if I look from the front, inversion and eversion should be relatively balanced. So my everters are going to counteract the action of the inverters, right? And at the talocural joint, which is just the true ankle joint, we think of dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, those should also be balanced looking from the side. Now technically, you're going to have a little bit more plantar flexion than dorsiflexion. That is the resting position of the ankle. But these motions should be balanced. Let's take another look at this clip and see where exactly Jimmy Crute gets hit. Well, if you look at this, he's getting hit above the knee on the back side of the thigh, a little bit more laterally placed towards the outside. And so most likely, it's going to be the common fibular nerve that was hit. 
It's not going to be the deep or superficial branches specifically because we only see those below the knee. He was hit above the knee, so most likely it's going to be the common fibular nerve. Now, assuming damage to the common fibular nerve, that's going to affect everything downstream from it. So it will have impact on the deep fibular nerve. It will have impact on the superficial fibular nerve. And as a result of that, all the muscles that those nerves control will also be negatively impacted. So we know that his deep fibular nerve was affected, therefore the tibialis anterior is going to be affected, and he's going to lose some of his dorsiflexion. Also, the superficial fibular nerve was affected, so the fibularis muscles here are going to be affected, and therefore he's going to lose some eversion as well. Now remember how I said that these actions should be in balance with each other, so plantar flexion and dorsiflexion should be relatively balanced, and inversion and eversion should be relatively balanced? Well now, if he's lacking dorsiflexion and eversion, you've now created an imbalance, because these two actions are impaired due to the damage to that common fibular nerve and its two branches. So now plantar flexion is unopposed by dorsiflexion, so his ankle's going to be sitting in more plantar flexion. Also, inversion is now unopposed due to the lack of eversion. And so it's going to be more likely that he's going to invert and roll his ankle. We've all rolled our ankle at some point, but his is much more likely to roll because now he lacks eversion and inversion is unopposed. You can see here that after the first round, he's taking some steps back. And what appears to be a pretty simple movement, he rolls his ankle pretty bad. Now technically this injury happened to his left leg, I flipped it for the purposes of YouTube so it looks like his right, but if we look at that right leg, it's very subtle, but watch as he swings his right leg. You'll actually see that he can't hold his foot up. Why can't he hold his foot up? Because now he has impaired dorsiflexion. Why does he have impaired dorsiflexion? Because that deep fibular nerve was affected due to the parent nerve being injured, that common fibular nerve. And also, it's very subtle, but in addition to that foot drop that we're seeing on his right side here in the video, we also see a little bit of hip hiking and a little bit of circumduction on that same side of the hip in order to clear that foot over the ground. We know he doesn't want the toes and the foot hitting the ground. He's going to clear it, right, so he doesn't trip. And so what he's having to do is raise that right hip up a little bit more so that way the foot has an easier time clearing the ground because now he lacks dorsiflexion. So hopefully you found this video interesting, helpful, scientific. If you didn't get a chance to go watch the fight, I recommend going and watching it. You can probably find it on YouTube or some other source. Uh, Anthony Smith obviously won the fight, but Jimmy Crudo is a champ. He actually managed to survive the entire remainder of the round by taking it to the ground, which is absolutely amazing because he likely had no sensation and very little function in that leg. So make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.